Day five at the President's Cup and the middle game, day three of this lacrosse day here at Frank Crane Arena in Nanaimo. One of the four win teams at the tournaments takes the floor today. That is the St. Albert Miners suffering their very first loss of the tournament yesterday. 10-7 at the hands of the Kahnawaga Indians. The updated standings, Kahnawaga now sitting at 5-0. and oh. St. Albert at 4-1, and one. Oakville 4-1, and one. Ladner 3-2, and two. Nanaimo 3-2, and two. Capital Region 1-3 and three with an overtime loss in there as well. So 1-4 and four on Adago, 1-4, and four. and Saskatoon sitting at 0-6. St. Albert in black, on Onondaga in white for this lacrosse game here at Frank Crane Arena today. We'll get to the anthems right now. We are ready for the third game today. President's Cup 2018 moves into the back half and already well into it today with a couple of games. Neither one close. Let's hope that this one is the first close game of the day. The 8 o'clock game, Kahnawaga 15, Saskatoon 5, and Oakville a 16-6 victory over the Ladner Pioneers. Edmund Cather's down in goal to our right side of the broadcast booth with Onondaga in whites. And the very stingy Aaron Bold down in goal to our left. St. Albert coming off a first loss, and I would think that that's going to be a pretty motivated bunch heading into this game. So Onondaga sitting at that 1-4 record is going to have to be very good at the top of their game and then some. 
one would think. Triolo and Seneca off the opening draw. Deacon's going to jump to it for the Red Hawks. And they'll bring up the offense for the first time. Ball is thrown across the floor. Nanticoke has it. Dumped to the corner, fed to the front, and there was an open man there. Looked like that was Leroy Halftown open. James Cather's coming towards the front. Working in behind, a flip off. Deacon to the middle. Long range shot, Leroy Halftown. Goes right back to him, only six on the 30. Dumps it low, and that's a block for the Miners. Williams has O'Meara up ahead of the play. O'Meara faking. Throws the ball back. Graydon Cornfield has been one of the top scorers in this tournament. First St. Albert, his goal scoring has been good. Here's a pass to the front over the shoulder effort. Kinnear and the ball bouncing free right in front of goaltender Cathers and it's taken away. The Red Hawks will come towards center court. Justin has the ball. Throws it back now. Cree Cathers. Plays the ball. Josh Becker. Becker to the front, gets in tight off the goalpost. Reset opportunity. And is there a second ball? Yes, there is. That's the official playing one ball to the other. I thought that was going to be a reset chance, but not the case at all. Up the floor now comes St. Albert. Graydon Cornfield to Jordan Cornfield. The captain goes back to Graydon in the middle. Throws it across for Keegan Ball. Lachlan runs a pick for him. Ball fires one. That one taken by Cathers. Looks for the outlet. High pass. The play whistled down. Against Onondaga, it's going to be St. Albert Ball again. So a free possession back to the Miners. Minute and 30 seconds in. No score in the contest as of yet. St. Albert Ball. Lachlan and Keegan Ball go to it. Keegan Ball tries to shake free. Throws back to Triolo. Triolo trying to barge through. Looks across the floor. A good look, but a shot too high from Jordan Cornfield. Triolo takes it back. Lots of time on the 30. Graydon Cornfield towards the net in tight. Cather stopped his shot. Pass towards center court. Adam Yee. He trots down towards the goal. Throws back. James Cathers takes a look. Just outside the paint. Throws it in front. Nantico had to go in and out of his stick. St. Albert ball. Sullivan speeding ahead. Pulls up. He'll bring out the offense. Ferris. Puts the ball low. Kinnear trying to penetrate. Shot stopped by Cathers and the ball taken away. A run up the floor. Deacon. Mates coming on to join him. Seneca. Becker. Cree Cathers. Becker going to the front, takes it, scores! Nice ball and a dunked finish by Josh Becker. Two minutes and 48 seconds in. Onondaga gets the lead. Becker made a perfect run to the net. Creek Hathers found him 248, the game's opening tally. And that is a perfect start for the Onondaga Redhawks. St. Albert coming off a loss. And you know a team that's very confident, but still may be shaken a bit from the setback against Conawaga. You can plant that seed of doubt with an early goal. Nanticoke lost the ball. Triolo's back to take it. The thing about St. Albert is they just continue to play the same way. They were down in the game against Conawaga. And yeah, there was some urgency there, but it's a team that just continues to play. Here's Keegan Ball run to the net. Ball took a shot and he was stopped. And a big push down on Jordan Cornfield. There's going to be a penalty call here. Slashing is going to be the call. Looks like Bill O'Brien is heading off for the slash. St. Albert to the power play for the first time of the game. Trailing 1-0. 3 minutes and 26 seconds into it. 
Keegan Ball has the cornfields to his right. Has Triolo and Lachlan to his left. And there the right-handers play catch with it. Here's Ball. Ball. Cornfield. Good save made. Cather's got his arm up in time. Reset St. Albert. Ball. Graydon Cornfield. Ball. Lachlan. Good high save again by Cather's. Ball on the floor. Another penalty call is coming, and this is going to be five on three lacrosse to come. And who's getting fingered here for the call? Is it Kevin Bucktooth, maybe? Initially, he thought it was going to maybe be him, but I think it's going to be Matt Noble instead. And a five on three for 137. And there's the fine line. You know you need to be aggressive defensively against this St. Albert Miners team. But you also know you can't be five on three. Lintz is going to lay back, so really they're playing a four on three setup. Ball had his pass deflected away. Rogers trying to come up with it, couldn't do so. Lintz will bring it back in. Passing to the crease, there's a shot that went just off to the side. And this might be a Rogers steal. It is. Rogers. Pulls up on the defender, took a shot. Bold made the save. Rogers whacking after the rebound, but it's taken away nicely by Lintz. 104 left in the five on three. Four and a half minutes into this lacrosse game, one nothing on Andaga. Josh Becker had the goal at 248. Graydon Cornfield, ball at the crease, a pass off, and there's Jordan Cornfield, a good save made by Cathers. Knew it hit him, wasn't quite sure where the ball went afterwards, but he knew he'd made that save. Got some help, and up the floor now comes Yi. Yi looks across. Has Leroy Halftown going for a run. Yi into the double team. Lost his stick and the ball. And here goes O'Meara, laying to the net. O'Meara on his own. Right in shooting. Good stick save by Cather's Ball is free. Lachlan to the front. There's Keegan Ball with a shot, and that goes way high off the goaltender. Edmund Cather's coming into the game. It was Bucktooth who'd been starting previous to that and getting a majority of minutes. Pass to the front here. Here's another chance for Jordan Cornfield. And again, it's Edmund Cathers making the save. Outside opportunity. Here's ball to the crease. Quick stick effort from Jordan Cornfield. St. Albert coming oh so close. Keegan ball. Graydon Cornfield. Ball again. All wound up, passing, Lachlan a drive, Cathers again, made the save, ball out of play. Ten seconds left and now the five on four, the five on three is up, Keegan Ball. Graydon Cornfield a shot again, it bounces out of play once again. It's going off the goaltender. Ball from the top, one second left in the five on four, it's now over. Noble's back on, there's a shot in the goal, finally from Graydon Cornfield. So much pressure on that five on three and five on four and just after the power play because that won't be a power play goal. Graydon Cornfield finds the mark. Cornfield at 5.53. Again, not a power play goal, but St. Albert was all closed up. Right around the goal and it seemed like it was only gonna be a matter of time that kept having the ball go out of play and getting it back, and they seemed every time to get it back like they were closing up that Onondaga defense tighter and tighter and tighter. The two teams on even terms. Keegan Ball off the faceoff with Ferris. Ball backs it up. Now Triolo. Ball again. Lachlan dumps it off. On the run is Kinnear. Kinnear passes the ball. It's put across and a drive from Triolo. Bounces free. Four seconds. A pass across. Ball with a shot. Cather's made the save. High ball into the air. Ball in the corner. Trying to find it. Seneca and Kinnear. And the goaltender Cather's will scoop it up. Seneca. Noble. Up ahead for the goal scorer, Becker. Josh Becker trying to barge in on the defender, but all over him is Williamson. Leroy Halftown loading up, plays it across. There's a shot in Nanticoke. The flex in behind the net. 
Nantico trying to win it back. Taken his dead and passed out. Andruko brings the ball forward. Coming up the middle. Passes the ball off. Ferris. Andruko gets it again. Nick Ferris. 1-1 one, one tie. Lachlan. Triolo. Triolo from the angle. So big and strong. Puts it across. Ferris. Back to the late man. Triolo. A shot. Just trying to beat out the 30. Right onto Cathers. A flip ball ahead. It'll bounce off the glass. Limboris takes it towards the net. He's going to pull up. Deacon comes to join. Ball passed across. Leroy Halftown puts it into the corner. Opportunity here for some penetration, and the ball goes back towards Deacon. Now it's on the outside again. Outside shot. That was stopped off the stick of Cree Cathers, and Aaron Bold makes the outlet to O'Meara. Just over eight minutes in, opening period. 1-1 lacrosse game. O'Meara has it. O'Meara. Now a pass to the side of the goal. Ball bouncing around. Recovered by St. Albert. Miners have half a clock to work with. Kinnear to the front. O'Meara staying out there as the ball goes into traffic. Kinnear couldn't get it back. Adam Yee will. He's a good runner. And he spots Deacon up ahead. Deacon taking on the defender. Trying to barge through. Ball knocked out of his stick. Andruko beside the net will take it away. That was a solid defensive set there. Right in front of his own goal was Sullivan to make sure that Deacon couldn't get by. And Sullivan's on the run the other way. Plays it across the floor. Lachlan to the crease, hoping to hit Jordan Cornfield. The ball goes back towards center court. And Druko from there. Keegan ball now. Ball to the middle. Working deep. Put the ball on the net. Cathers takes the ball away. 10.55 to go in the first. 1-1 lacrosse game. Leroy Halftown. James Cathers. Broken stick on the floor. That was Creek Cathers. He has to go back. There's Nanticoke, a high shot. Stopped by Bold. Ball taken away by Davis. Up the floor goes Lintz. Lintz on the run. Cradling as he goes. Gets to the middle. Lintz won't shoot. Plays it off to Triolo, and he might. Triolo to the middle. Tries to power through. Put it to the crease. Kinnear couldn't grab it. Now he does. 10 on the 30. Kinnear put it across. Long range shot from Lachlan. That missed the mark. Aaron Bold comes out of his net. He'll just lob this down the floor. On a dag of ball in a 1-1 lacrosse game. 248. Becker opened the scoring. Taking a nice pass in tight to Aaron Bold. And then Graydon Cornfield sniping one just after a 5-on-3 power play. Becker, Seneca, Nanticoke to the middle. Over the shoulder shot. Off the target, though. Ball controlled up top. Working in, Nanticoke takes a look. Takes a drive, deflecting wide. Bucktooth has it now. Bucktooth plays it down low. Ball in front. Nanticoke stopped by Bold. Ball in behind the net. Duff able to get it. Stays out of the crease, too, which was not easy to do. O'Meara will take over. Slowly approaching center. Plays it into Ferris. Nick Ferris throws it back to Jordan Cornfield. Working his way to the goal and puts it back to Ferris. Keegan Ball. Ball to the middle. Now Ferris, good lane, shoots right into the chest of Cather's Ball is free. Onondaga with it. Noble. Plays it back. That's going to take O'Brien a bit of time to grab, but he does. Pass comes forward. Becker. James Cathers. Cathers takes a look. Nice spin move. Still controlling it. Trying to ward off the defender. Ran into a double team and the ball comes out. A knockdown. Ball taken though by Lintz. Lintz gets away from two Red Hawks and he's got room now. Three men against two. Lintz plays it back. There's Kinnear with a shot but too high. Ball bounding back to center. On to it, Triolo. Triolo puts it down towards the crease. Just beyond the arc is Kinnear. Graydon Cornfield with him. Ball goes back towards center, and that will do it for the possession. 8-16 remaining in the period in this 1-1 lacrosse game. 
Not a lot of high quality chances. And neither team playing the fast transition game that is I guess what you'd say the Oakville Titans have become famous for in this tournament. Using that to become one of the top teams. Leroy Halftown takes a look. Put a shot in off bold. High rebound out of play. That knocks two balls down. One stays in play. One was caught up in the netting. Onondaga from the angle. James Cathers coming towards the net. Took a shot. Scored. Bold ducked his shoulder. Cathers rifled it right above that shoulder. Two to one. Second time in the period. Onondaga has the lead. James Cathers, great size and strength. And he saw that Aaron Bull dropped that shoulder, and immediately that's where he was going to go. Decisive and a perfect shot. 2 1 Onondaga Redhawks leading the St. Albert Miners at the 12 16 mark of period number one. Still another pair of games. Day five at the President's Cup today. Coming up at 5 o'clock, Capital Region, Kahnawaga. Can the Kahnawaga Indians move to 6-0? and oh? Nobody betting against that squad right now with how good they've been. Cornfield at the top, Keegan Ball. Ball on the run to the middle. Jordan Cornfield just missed on the far side with the shot. Here's a run for Triolo, cutting through with a shot. He scores! Mike Triolo. And a nice run there. And I think that actually might have been Lachlan who scored it, not Triolo. 91 and not 12. The end result is the game is tied at 2 2. 12 52, the time of the tally. I called Triola, but I think that was Lachlan who got the shot away. We'll confirm it on the goal announcement in a moment. Nice hard shot from the angle to even this game up at 2-2. Yes, it was Lachlan who gets the goal. Apologies. Lachlan moving up. Plays in Keegan Ball on the run to the net. Ball tried to shovel it in, but a crease violation. He knew he was going to get close to the goaltender there and just put his stick down low and hoped he might be able to finesse it in. Rogers plays ahead, half town. Josh Becker. Becker working on O'Meara, throws it back. Lintz with a good pick, though. Lintz has a man breaking. Has O'Meara now coming to the net. O'Meara takes a look across. O'Meara passes it, ball, Triolo. Triolo trying to get to the front. Jordan Cornfield in for Keegan Ball. Couldn't take it with his stick. Arnold passes forward. Limboris on the run. Pass to the net, taken by Becker. Becker, Seneca, James Cathers. Cather's getting down deep into the corner just outside the crease. Tried to put it down low on Bold, but there was no room there. Bold passes off. Andruko's got the ball. Speeding inside. Onondaga territory. Kinnear. Ferris. Ferris, a pass across the floor. Fed by Lachlan towards Triolo. Ball stolen away. Adam Yee escapes trouble. E on the run, plays the ball back. Nanticoke is on to it. Lee Nanticoke, well outside, has a late man coming. That's James Cathers, who has one of the goals for Onondaga. There's an outside shot on Bold. He gets a piece of it. Ball back down all the way towards netminder Edmund Cathers, who's going to come out and play this ball forward as he does so. Penalty call against St. Albert, and the Miners are going to be down. 
First man advantage for Onondaga in the game with 5-0-1 to go in the first period in this 2-2 lacrosse game. Becker and Cree Cathers are the lefties. James Cathers, Lee Nanticoke are the righties. And another lefty playing the point position right now. That's Leroy Halftown. James Cathers. Halftown fakes. Cathers puts it across. Becker jumped up to try and grab it. He won't, but here's a nice run up the floor. Toll to the net, getting in close. Shoots one. Edmund Cathers, a great save down low. Kicked out a leg, but moved his body over as well. Power play continues, but the Redhawks have given up the best chance so far. Cree Cathers to Halftown. Becker. Becker for Nanticoke. Becker again. There's an outside shot on DeBold. Made the save on Becker. Lintz runs the floor. Has Keegan Ball on the other side. Lintz for Ball. Breakaway. Faking. Bringing up the elbows was Cathers to keep that out. Four minutes to go in the period. Two excellent shorthanded chances by the St. Albert Miners as Rogers bounces the ball across for Becker. 50 seconds of power play time remaining for the Red Hawks. Becker comes up with it. Passing it across. Becker takes a look, shoots one, deflects towards the glass. Nanticoke is onto it. Nanticoke puts it across. Becker a shot into Bold, made the save. Aaron Bold's going to hang on. Looks for the outlet, and he's got O'Meara. Triolo's already well ahead of the play. Lots of room for O'Meara to gain the zone and start to rag the ball for St. Albert. A bounce pass goes across the floor. Ferris controlling way up top. Ferris goes across. Triolo, five seconds on the power play. Omir is going to head off. Sullivan comes back to the floor. Triolo has it. Puts it across for Ball. Keegan Ball lost possession. Recovered by Triolo. It goes high into the air. Will this stay in play? No. Oh, it does. I think it bounced back in. Ball comes towards Kinnear. Ferris now. Lachlan from the angle. Cross, quick stick. Cathers was there. Ferris got the ball back. Officials call for the reset. That was the right call. Pass to the front for Keegan Ball. Another save by Cathers. And a penalty is coming. Keegan Ball was given a rough ride, and everybody knows who Keegan Ball is in this tournament. He's had such a fantastic one. Third in tournament scoring right now, 26 points. Noble goes to the box. The Miners to the man advantage. Onondaga's had the lead twice. But the teams have traded all four of the goals in the period. Two minutes and 18 seconds on the game clock and two minutes on the clock to Matt Noble. The cornfields are out as the lefties, Lachlan and Triolo, are the righties. And Keegan Ball will play the point position. And Ball can shift around and take a spot as a right-handed shooter as well. Ball passes off for Graydon Cornfield. Jordan Cornfield gets it. Stiff angle. Puts it back. Graydon Cornfield to Ball. Nice flip pass at the crease. Triolo. Shot goes high. Ball to the glass. A jump up to grab it from Rogers, but a great effort by Keegan Ball. He's got a lane to the net. Ball cuts in. His shot just misfired with that, and there's going to be another penalty against Onondaga. They're playing a very rough game here. And flirting with disaster, this is the second five on three. But at the same time, 
I think they've managed to just put St. Albert off a little bit. They've been aggressive interference is the call to the point of maybe over-aggression. But it also has had an impact, and you can see the Miners don't like the way that they're being played. But where is that line between being too aggressive and not? So Bucktooth is into the box. There's a shot low. Cather's closing up, makes the save. Lachlan was down low, but couldn't beat the Onondaga goaltender. A ball ahead for Becker. Becker rolls it down the floor. Might be a tough one for Seneca to get it is. He had three guys basically in his vicinity. Too many on the floor for St. Albert. And this is going to be an opportunity for a ball rag. This is a tough one, three on five, but Becker will take it. Immediately he's doubled. Becker tries to get against the wall and keep the ball as close to his chest as possible. Finally it comes out. Williams is going to run with it. 58 seconds in the five on three. 113 in the first period. 2-2 two -two tie. Keegan Ball. Lachlan. Ball again. Graydon Cornfield to the front. Lachlan to the crease. Cornfield shoots and a great save by Cathers off Jordan Cornfield. High ball towards center. Deacon turned just the wrong way. It went out of play. And again, this is a tough task to try and get that ball rag started down the two men. 30 seconds left in the five on three. Keegan Ball on his way towards the front, flips it off. Pass went out of Lachlan's stick, now he has to reload, Ball again. Graydon Cornfield tries to get open, put it to the crease, quick stick, ball shot to the side angle. Graydon Cornfield to Jordan, quick stick effort again, and Cathers comes across, he made the save. Keegan Ball. Ball, Graydon Cornfield, Jordan Cornfield shoots, Cather's closing up, he's got it. High outlet pass, Noble, breakaway, here he comes with 13 seconds, he fakes, great save Aaron Bold. Into the final 10 seconds and still power play time here. Long pass down floor, goes astray, can Noble pick it up again, he can't. Triolo from long range just dumps it down to the net, 2-2 after the game's opening, 20 minutes of lacrosse. And the Onondaga Redhawks down five on three twice, seven seconds away from getting out of that situation for a second time. And they've had the lead 1-0 and 2-1. They've been very aggressive. And right now I'd say it's been to their credit. It hasn't cost them. The power plays have not led to goals. Edmund Cathers has been great in net. And St. Albert doesn't like the rough ride that they're getting, so it's put them off just a little bit. You can't play another two periods getting two five on threes against a period, you would think. But after 20 minutes and a 2-2 tie, the Onondaga Redhawks will take that and St. Albert will look to try and get their game on track. And it's going to take some real sharp shooting here. They're going to get looks. They're going to get chances the way that the first 20 minutes have gone, but must capitalize. We'll be back in about nine minutes with period two. Located on the rich waters of the Salish Sea, backdrop by thick, temperate rainforest with their rolling hills and the rugged mountains in the distance, Nanaimo was the first home to the local Sinema First Nations people. For centuries they lived here in connection with the land. And in many ways, this close tie to the wilderness of Vancouver Island resonates today. 
In the 1850s, the Hudson Bay Company set up a trading post in the region here in Nanaimo. Today, that trading post still stands with the HBC Bastion standing guard over the waters of the harbour here in Nanaimo. For many decades afterwards, Nanaimo flourished as a coal mining town. Much of this early history is on display at the Nanaimo Museum. Today, Nanaimo is a bustling and modern urban centre on the edge of natural wonder. Experience Nanaimo's supernatural wilderness and find yourself again. Nanaimo allows me to do my passions through accessibility. Just the way that it's laid out, within 10 or 15 minutes, I can basically be from my house and doing something that I am truly passionate about. For me, it's about connection. I know a lot of people go to nature to disconnect from the world, but for me, it's about feeling like I'm part of something bigger. I feel it helps me connect to other people with similar interests and passions. Nanaimo has a little bit of something for everybody, and I think it does that little bit of everything really well. It's a place where you can discover passions that you didn't even know you had. It gives you city life and gives you wilderness life all at the same time. It has both fresh water and salt water with easy access. You don't have to travel more than 10 to 15 minutes to be on a body of water, no matter where you live. You can either be out on the ocean fishing in 15, 20 minutes, or you can be on Long Lake like we are today, enjoying some trout and bass fishing. With diving around this area, Nanaimo or British Columbia in general, it's actually rated in the top in the world. Part of the reason that we have so much life here is the colder water with lots of nutrients in the water. One of our very popular activities we do is snorkeling with seals and certain times of year when we get the sea lions coming by us. 2,000 pound sea lion coming right up to you a few inches away from you. Just amazing. You think you're swimming along great in the water and this thing comes and does a somersault in front of you and just takes off and you realize how small in the ocean you actually are. The best part about owning a tour company is getting to show everyone the reasons why we live here in Nanaimo. I love the culture and natural wonders here in Nanaimo and I love being able to see it for the first time every day through the eyes of our guests. Yeah, Nanaimo really is in the center of everything. I'm really passionate about regenerative agriculture because that's what farming is all about. Some of the most exciting things for me in Nanaimo are the harvest. When there's all this abundance and we're able to take our food and set it out into the community. And when we go out for dinner sometimes, we get to see our food being served to us and served to our community and there's a lot of excitement around that. At the markets we sell at in Nanaimo, there are over 200 vendors who participate and you can do your full spectrum of shopping at these markets so you're invited to come to the market. Currently, right now, we're concentrated on sourcing all our ingredients from mid-Vancouver Island. We like to utilize uh, what we can get from local farmers. Breweries, wineries, and distilleries in Nanaimo have uh, really exploded in the last few years. We've got a couple great wineries. Just down the road from us at the Longwood, we've got a distillery that makes some world-class uh, gin vodka and uh, even absinthe, which is pretty rare these days. We've got three breweries in town, uh, one brew pub. Uh, you can really occupy a lot of your time traveling from one drink establishment to another. We've got pretty much everything here. Well, we're sitting here at Piper's Lagoon, which is one of these little hidden gems that a lot of people don't know about. But I'm commonly often known as the Big Cheese. And I coined the name the Big Cheese not long after I started the store. There's a pretty good variety of establishments in Nanaimo now. There's some really excellent places to eat now in Nanaimo, which are doing quite nicely. We have shopping, we have all the well-known brands, but we also have a, a cute little downtown area with lots of independent businesses. Well, I think the location makes it very special. The abundance of parks and activities and outdoor fresh air things and Everyone who moves here from somewhere else comments on how welcoming the people are. And I think that's one thing that makes Nanaimo very special is the, the welcoming and uh, the amount of stuff there is to do.
With its dramatic and diverse landscapes, including forests like this, Nanaimo offers so much. Impressive coastlines? Yeah, we got that. Rolling hills? Rugged mountains? Yeah, we got that too. I'm more of a country mouse than a city mouse, and Nanaimo, the city, it has enough of what I need, but just the, just the natural beauty of it. I can feel it in the pores of my skin, I can feel it in my lungs when I breathe the air. It's just something, when I get out here and I just see trees and blue sky, it's, it makes me happy. Yeah, my big thing every year is, is uh, to go down to Nanaimo River and jump in, because the river feels like it's a healer. Um, that beautiful fresh water and the trees around it just it cures whatever ails you, and uh, there's nothing like it to me in the world. I've really been encouraged, especially in the last 10 years or so, that Nanaimo is recognizing the art scene a lot more and celebrating that. And there's some fantastic festivals that happen every year, and I've been lucky to be involved in a lot of those, because I do live here. Some of my passions are getting out to nature, so going for hikes to places like Ammonite Falls or Neck Point. We have one of the first wineries on Vancouver Island. We have uh, one of the oldest brew pubs. Uh, we have a bunch of craft distilleries. I like to use Nanaimo as a base for my expeditions because it has a little something for everyone. If people want to stay in a hostel, they can. If they want to stay in a nice uh, four-star hotel, they can. And uh, most people love the different variety of accommodations we have. What surprises visitors in Nanaimo is the abundance of wildlife and the immense natural beauty. I like to go explore all the different islands because they have trails and glorious forests to see, but they all have these little bays and secret little gems. And so if you're into exploring, you get a lot out of it. My absolute favorite place in Nanaimo is Newcastle Island, or as the Nanaimo First Nations call it, Seisuchin. Nature is a big part of it because when you're going to carve something for the longhouse, which is in our... At Frank Crane Arena in Nanaimo, the home of the 2018 President's Cup, period two action about to get underway between Onondaga and St. Albert. A very good period for the Red Hawks, keeping this strong St. Albert team at bay. Playing to a 2-2 tie and killing off a pair of five on threes against. Now, they're still going to be down for about seven seconds to open up this second period. But, mission accomplished through 20 minutes. But just watching the way that St. Albert plays, there's not a whole bunch that's different about them when things are going well, their body language and the way that they conduct themselves to when things aren't going well. That's the mark of a team that's been there and done that, right? Just, you don't get too discouraged, you don't get too panicky. I think what we've seen over the course of this tournament is we've seen other teams have kind of figured that out and have found a way to be focused and not let calls rile them up, not let the other team rile them up, but just keep that focus. The Miners with one lone setback at the President's Cup. 10-7 yesterday to Kahnawaga, who is now 5-0. They'll try to make it 6-0 in the game after this one. That team has been so impressive. And the team that's also been impressive that should be getting, I think, more talk, and that's starting to happen as the week goes on, is Oakville. Their record is among the elite. They're sitting at 4-1 and one right now, the Titans. Big win over Ladner today. Ladner 3-3. Three and three. Oakville and the Nymo, the Lakey, that should be a real good game. Jordan Cornfield is stopped by Edmund Cathers, and he had a great first period. Here's Deacon transitioning the ball. Opportunity in tight, and the goal from James Cathers is second today. He is tough to handle when he wants to get in tight. And that goes for the goaltender, Aaron Bold, and the Miners' defense for the third time in this lacrosse game. 
On a dag, it goes ahead. The Red Hawks three. The Miners two. Second consecutive Red Hawks goal for James Cathers. He's got two. Josh Becker has one. Braden Cornfield and Richard Lachlan have the St. Albert tallies. Off the faceoff, a call coming once again against the Red Hawks, and that's been nothing new. Six on five set for St. Albert. Ball to the front. Lachlan put it across, no quick stick. Ferris wanted it, but clutched it back. Pass to the crease out of Lachlan's reach. Ball was deflected. 30-second clock has just two seconds left in it. Ball put it across, long shot. And now here comes the power play chance. It's going to be called a hold. I think it's Rogers who's being sent off the floor. It is. So back to the power play for the St. Albert Miners, and now they're having a conversation. They know exactly what they're going to see by this time. Is I have this as power play number five for them. They know exactly what they're going to see from the defense. Can they beat it? Ball to Lachlan. Lachlan to ball again. Loads it up. Ball. Lachlan shoots. Cather's the save. Triolo. Reset for the Miners. Lachlan. Graydon Cornfield. Jordan Cornfield. Ball. Shoots one. Cather's the save. Ball passed ahead by O'Brien. It's bouncing towards the front and trying to get his body in the right position was Yee, and he goes after Aaron Bold and knocks the ball out. Yee on Bold, and Bold finally is able to scoop that ball away. Adam Yee continues his run. Lachlan. Triolo. Lachlan again. Ball in the middle. Graydon Cornfield to Ball to Lachlan. He shoots wide. Ball goes inside the St. Albert bench. And there's an argument which way possession's going. And it's going to be thrown back, and Onondaga has to make a quick change because it is going to be St. Albert ball. Back they come again. Lachlan, ball. Lachlan, Triolo. Lachlan to ball. Graydon Cornfield has a look. Plays in Keegan ball. Graydon Cornfield. Lachlan put it across. Jordan Cornfield couldn't take it. Goes right to Cathers, and he's able to scoop it up. 45 seconds left in the power play. A pass up towards center court. Trying to get away was Arnold, but he couldn't do so, and Williamson drops the ball back. Now O'Meara to Lachlan for Triolo. Triolo. Lachlan. Ball. Graydon Cornfield to ball. Lachlan. Shoots one, just missed down low. Cathers has perfect positioning, or at least he has so far. He's been rock solid. He's really been the backbone that's allowed the offense to chip away with three goals and have the 3-2 lead. 13 seconds of power play time left. Wade Bucktooth on the ball. Moves down towards the corner. Puts it to the middle. James Cather's a shot. Aaron Bold, a good save. Ball loose. Bouncing around. A chance to grab for Williams. Williams shakes his check. Five on five. Williams up and over center. A pass off. Deflecting away from Lachlan. Can Kinnear grab it? He does. Taking some checks. He's in a one-on-three battle. But he's still doing a good job to keep that ball down there. Finally taken away. Rogers settles for Onondaga. Pass goes ahead. Brian Bucktooth lifts the ball forward. Leroy Halftown. Halfway through the possession. Halftown to the crease with a shot. Kept out by Bold. He kicked it away. And a penalty call again. Another power play for St. Albert in a 3-2 deficit. Cree Cathers that time. 
And he's called for crease play, I believe. St. Albert gets chance after chance. Lachlan, Triolo, Lachlan. Ball, passes it off, Graydon Cornfield. Ball, on the move. Thought about shooting it, thinks better of it, goes back to the point position. Graydon Cornfield took a shot, deflecting high into the rafters. Red Hawks ball. Launched ahead. Here comes Yee. Yee, Becker. Becker in traffic. Trying to work free. Becker pinned to the wall, gets away. Becker running in behind. Becker continues to control. Another 115 to rag off here. Makes a pass across. Aaron Bold picked that up. He's got the biggest stick. Bold looking for the outlet. And he swings it to Riley. Lachlan. 17 seconds on the 30. Lachlan takes a look. Ball. Graydon Cornfield to ball once more. Cornfield down low Triolo in a ball battle here, but nicely won by Arnold behind his net. Flings it up for Noble. Noble has a man ahead of the play. That's the two-goal man, James Cathers. Deacon now. Deacon bounces it. Josh Becker has it up high. Becker goes across the floor. Leroy Halftown. James Cathers, 20 seconds to go. You could hear them yelling it from down at floor level. Josh Becker, 3-2 Onondaga Redhawks leading the St. Albert Miners. Game cruising along in the second period. A pass towards Becker. Scouted out by Aaron Bold and he bounces it. Williams comes forward with O'Meara. Power plays over, five on five, pass to the cutter, and there's a shot from Kinnear, and again, Edmund Cathers makes the save. Six minutes into the period. Cree Cathers. Becker. Settles the pace, throws the ball across. Seneca, Nanticoke to the front. Cree Cathers wanted a quick stick. Ball stolen by Toll. Toll up ahead, Andruco. Brings up the Miners, pass off Triolo to the crease, chance in tight, Cather's a good save. Right of the crease, an opportunity for Sullivan. Great position, but better position by Edmund Cather's. Limboris has it. Limboris throws the ball back. Bucktooth put it across the floor. Nanticoke, Wade Bucktooth. Pass down low, well read. The Miners can cruise up the floor. Good transition run there, made by Lintz. Andrew Cota Lintz in the middle. Lintz peels back, rolls it down for Keegan Ball. Halfway through the 30. Ball to the middle. Plays it across the floor, pass to the crease, and Lachlan wanted the quick stick. Arnold's going to get a chance to take this away, and he will. James Cather's running towards the net, but... Ball played in this time. Taken by Cree Cathers. Becker. Seneca. Trying to wheel his way through. Runs in behind the goal. Switches. Seneca from the angle. Tries to take on Duff. Gets in tight. Aaron Bold stopped this shot. Penalty call for a hold. Seneca was a tough man to handle there. Did that basically all on his own. Onondaga going to the power play, up 3-2 in this lacrosse game. Almost halfway through it. Not looking like a 1-4 team against a 4-1 team right now. And the 1-4 team has the lead by a goal and a chance to extend it. Leroy Halftown. Becker. James Cathers on the move. Leroy Halftown again. Cathers throws it across, Wade Bucktooth takes a look. Cathers, halftown shot, kicked away by Bold. Cathers has it from the corner. Halftown, Becker, Bucktooth, 
Becker again. Nanticoke takes a look. To the middle for Becker. Fires, didn't get through. Ball battle to come. Still lots of possession time. Nanticoke. Cross floor pass. Put to Halftown. Halftown wires one, deflecting wide. Recovered by Nanticoke. Four seconds. His shot stopped by Bold, and there's no rebound. Bold outlets. Sullivan. Runs away from Becker. Sullivan to the net. Coming in on goal. In alone, Cather's reaching to stop him. Great save. And you don't see a lot of those transition runs from St. Albert, but that was a great one by Sullivan. Better save by Cather's. 45 seconds left in the power play. Triolo ragging the ball for St. Albert. Sends it across against the wall. Keegan Ball takes it. Kinnear. Triolo. Triolo settles it down. 20 seconds remaining here in the power play. Triolo draws a double team. Throws out of it though. Ball played across. High into the air it goes. Bucktooth in behind his net. Gets some help from Yi. Power play's over, but up the floor goes Yi quickly. Runs right in the duff. Can Yi get away from him? Hangs on to the ball and throws it back to Noble. He'll head off the floor. Cree Cather's coming towards the net. Six on the 30. Puts the ball to the middle. Outside shot. Nanticook bowled the save. Ball was caught up in his equipment and he just wanted to make sure he got out of the way of the crease just in case it leaked in behind. More than halfway through the game now. Five goals between these teams. There's a shot from Jordan Cordfield. Edmund Cathers closes up. One goal in this period. Second of the game. 30 seconds into it by James Cathers. He's got two. Becker has the other. Lachlan and Graydon Cornfield for St. Albert. Becker feeds down low. Pass to the middle. There's a shot and a goal. Nanticoke. 4-2. A two-goal lead now for the Onondaga Redhawks. Lee Nanticoke from the outside. Going low on Aaron Bold. 10-29. The time of that tally in, in the scheme of this game. That could be a big one. And the big question mark right now. Can St. Albert solve Edmund Cathers? They've had shots. They've had good looks. Sullivan just had that recent transition run, but Edmund Cathers is stopping everything in net. On the other side, Aaron Bold still with that tremendous average. And if the goalies that have played significant minutes, he has the best goals against average in the entire tournament. But he's looked human yesterday and today. Onondaga setting up with Deacon. Nanticoke, who's just made it 4-2. Plays down low. Chance at the crease. Aaron Bold stops Halftown over the shoulder shot. Bold again comes up with the ball. A couple of important saves for him. Andruko, Keegan Ball. Will Ball have some individual magic? Runs to the middle. Keegan Ball getting in tight. Shoots and scores! You bet he does. Keegan Ball's been very much the distributor. But that time, drew a penalty and then scored. And he goes back to the restraining line head down afterwards. Steely focus from number 45. That was one of the rare times that you saw anybody on the St. Albert side with some urgency. And, you know, it's okay to be a little bit selfish. Keegan Ball's an elite scorer and just made an elite play on his own. Normally just continuing to play in his teammates and take the opportunities when given. Well, that's an opportunity that wasn't given. He created it. Was going to put his team on the power play, but 
was able to finish it. There's a shot from James Cathers that was stopped by Bold. Red Hawks four, Miners three, O'Meara's on the run. O'Meara, ball beside him. Does he have another one in there? He scores! Keegan Ball! Putting the team on his back when they needed a spark. Their top scorer has created that with two fast goals. 11-18, and then 18 seconds later at 11-36. This game is even at 4-4. The body language of Keegan Ball says enough is enough. Two great plays in a short span, 18 seconds apart. Keegan Ball wanted to call there as he was given a rough ride. Lachlan plays it across. There's a shot from the outside too high from Graydon Cornfield. Dan Rogers back deep. Puts it across to Bucktooth and now up ahead. Adam Yee moving towards the Miners defense. 4-4 tie. Cree Cathers trying to get to the middle. Arrives there now. Ball stolen away. Breakaway opportunity. A run to the net for Williamson, and he's not going to be allowed to do it. A penalty, or is it two penalties behind the play? Williamson really wanted that run, and he was open. But it is going to be a minor's penalty only. Unsportsmanlike conduct is going to be the call. Davis goes off the floor, and what an inopportune time for that. Williamson was going to be in cold. Instead, a power play chance for the team that has never trailed in this game, the Onondaga Redhawks. 4-4 right now. Might that interrupt the Keegan Ball brilliance? You would think it would. And that was brilliance from Keegan Ball. Halftown. Becker. Nanticoke. Becker shoots wide. Cathers comes out of his net slowly, knowing that the possession is pretty much over. Hoists the ball high into the air. Down the floor it goes. Aaron Bold, inching out of his net. Bounce pass. Goes back to the restraining line. It's still there for Triolo. Triolo still has a chance at it. Huge check. Bold down to the floor was Johnson. He's all right, back towards the bench. 6.43, clock running. Josh Becker gets a return feed. Seneca, Nanticoke, Cam Seneca, Becker, wind, shoots. Aaron Bold comes up with that ball. High outlet, Sullivan. Can he take it down? Has a man with him. It's Kinnear. Scores! And it was actually Ferris, not Kinnear. Had a hard time picking up the player. And so did Edmund Cathers. 5-4. St. Albert first lead. Nick Ferris cutting through to the net. 13-39 the time of the tally. And it's now a three-goal run for the Miners. Nick Ferris shorthanded. And even though they were a man down, St. Albert has stiffened it up. And Ferris was able to walk in and bury that. Ball battle, and is there going to be a penalty call here? I believe there is. Onondaga, interference call, 6.16 on the clock in period two. So four on four for 32 seconds. St. Albert five, Onondaga four. Keegan Ball with a couple of goals. Lachlan has one and he's got it now. Ball with Lachlan beside him. Ball. 
hanging on to it, loading up, plays it down low. Graydon Cornfield gets away. Cather's a great save. Noble trying to scoop the loose ball. He's down on the floor. Rifles it all the way down, off the glass. Stolen away, though. Good defensive work there. My Lachlan, he's got the ball. Delayed call coming once again against Onondaga. It'll be the third five-on-three of the game. The ball just thrown in on to Cathers. And some complaining here from Kevin Bucktooth. And he's having an animated conversation with Graydon Cornfield. Having one with the official as well as he heads to the box. 120 of power play time left on the first interference call. And now another two minutes goes up on the board. Third five on three of the game for St. Howard. Can the Miners cash in? Jordan Cornfield to Graydon, back to Jordan. Keegan Ball to the crease, faking Lachlan. Good arm saved by Cathers. Ball out of play off the goalie. New 30. Jordan Cornfield. Graydon Cornfield. Jordan Cornfield put that one off the goalie. It might have gone off the post afterwards as well. As it looked like it still had forward momentum. Long pass. Breakaway opportunity. Shorthanded. Deacon faking. Scores. Tie game. These teams match each other. Short-handed goal for short-handed goal. Deacon behind everybody. No mistake on Aaron Bold. Down two men, but a very alert bench work there. Five-five tie with 5:09 left in period number two. Still 53 seconds of five-on-three time, but Noble off the draw gets the ball. Noble coming ahead. Nanticoke to the front for Yi. Ball knocked out of his reach. Can he recover it? He can't. Nanticoke will though. Lee Nanticoke double teamed as Bold comes out on him. Omir is there too. The ball is out. He tried to take it away from his man. Won't be able to. Here's a breakaway chance. Cornfield's in. Faking scores. Graydon Cornfield, second of the game. Six to five, a five on three power play goal. Miners get the lead back. Is this any fun to watch? Graydon Cornfield was wide open. Ball with two, Cornfield with two. Ferris and Lachlan, the others. Cathers to Becker, Nanticoke, and the shorthanded effort just seconds ago by Deacon. Still 105 on that penalty to Kevin Bucktooth. A faceoff win for Seneca, but Triolo makes sure he can't get the ball. And possession goes the way. Of the Red Hawks on a dagger ball. James Cathers. Moving up top, plays the ball across Wade Bucktooth. Bucktooth puts it across the floor. Nanticoke onto it. Passing to the corner. Deacon in heavy traffic. Ball rolls out, right to the goaltender, Aaron Bull. Four minutes to go in the second, 6-5. St. Albert with the lead. Andruco plays it back. Keegan Ball coming up the middle. Ball passes it off. Lachlan. Ball again. Jordan Cornfield to the front. Triolo faking shot over the top. Just missed. Noble flings it ahead. What a pick off by Lachlan. Alone Triolo faking shot. Standing up tall was Cathers. Makes the save. High outlet. Bucktooth is back on the floor. Went after the man. and That means that St. Albert can get the ball. Five on five. Lachlan coming to the front. Has to wait for his teammates to join him. They do. Outside shot. Cathers made the save. 
Ferris drilled that one. Seneca, Arnold. Arnold passes for Becker. Nanticoke, James Cathers. Trying to get to the front, passing off. Cree Cather's shot went too high. Halftown and Becker both went to it. Leroy Halftown has it. Pass down low. Cree Cather's shot wide. Maybe a tie for one more. Leroy Halftown a shot on to Bull. There's a reset there, but Red Hawks were changing just in case. The responsible play. O'Meara coming towards the goal. Plays it back across. Ferris puts it down low. Kinnear jumps up to grab it. Kinnear in behind the net. Seven on the 30. Mike Triolo, hard pass across. Outside shot. O'Meara got it away, and the ball thrown back towards center. Limboris onto it, taking on the defender. Limboris. Wade Bucktooth. Bucktooth in tight. Just outside the paint. Bucktooth passes it off. Ball thrown up top. Josh Becker from the outside. Pass down low. Seneca tried to put it over the top. There's a player down on the floor and is play going to be called. I think that's Snyder that's down. And he can't get up. He's on his back and he's in difficulty. Don't think there's going to be a call on the play. Now he gets to his feet. He's hurting, but does not want to go to the dressing room, goes to the bench. Well, he's not going to be able to sit at the bench for a while. He's got to regain his composure, and you hope just winded. And he's definitely feeling it. And they bring the mop on, I think, for the first time today. 1.43 to go in the second period, 6-5. to five. One goal lead in favor of of the St. Albert Miners. They've turned this game around, and the guy that did it was Keegan Ball. Two goals in 18 seconds. They actually went on a three-goal run, and then the teams have traded goals since then for the 6-5 scoreline. 2-2 after one period of play, and still lots of time left for a goal or two in this second period for sure. On a dag of ball. James Cathers. Seneca with him to help. Cathers continues with the ball. Spinning back towards the net. Makes the play. Seneca. Halftown. Becker. Becker. Pass for Seneca. Broken up. Ball stolen away. Here come the Miners. Opportunity for a shot. Lintz scores. 7-5 Miners. John Lintz with a transition beauty. 5 of the last 6 goals in the game have gone St. Albert's way. John Lintz with the speed and the finish. 7-5 was the score. That this St. Albert team beat Capital Region by day 2 of the tournament. It's 7 to 5 now. And they found a way to take over. And no doubt the turning point in this game so far, and there's still lots of time left. That 18 second span of Keegan Ball brilliance. Here's a chance in tight. And a crease violation on a great run by Rogers. Put the ball in, but the crease violation will wash it out. O'Meara. Ball high. Off of Kinnear and out of play. Upset with himself over that one. Yee starts forward. Into the final minute we go of period number two. Seven, five minors. Yee for the Red Hawks. Throws the ball back. Becker takes a look. Becker to the crease. Chance in tight. And no clean shot. Snyder right back on the floor. And he went right after Nanticoke and made sure... He had no chance to make the move he wanted. Here's O'Meara with a lane to the net. Passes it off. A bit too low, though, for Graydon Cornfield. Lachlan tries to steal it. He does. 25 in the period. Lachlan in a double team. Trying to work out of it. Lachlan pushed back. Ball on the floor. 
Limboris breakaway. Limboris in faking, shoots. Aaron Bold, a big save, looked behind him, reached behind him and kept the ball out. Eight seconds left. Is there a timeout to come here from the St. Albert Miners? Limboris eyeball to eyeball with Aaron Bold. And yesterday, there was a goal on Bold from Blaze Reardon where he made the save just like he did there, but the ball was behind him and he didn't see it in time and it trickled in. That time, made the save on a clear breakaway for Limboris. Reached behind him, had the presence of mind. He found it, kept it out, and then made a confident pass down the floor. Nine seconds on the game clock here. And that's lots of time for this very talented Miners offense. Down 4-2 at one stage in this period. and Five of the last six goals in the game to turn it into a 7-5 lead. This is an impressive bunch. And Onondagas brought their A game today. Only down by two. And it was almost one. Limboris on the breakaway, but Aaron Bold standing his ground, reaching behind him and making sure that ball wasn't going to get in. Clock running again. For the final play of the period, Triolo stopped by Cathers. Looks for the outlet. Can he put it down in the net? Cathers off the post. It would have beaten the buzzer. He hit the post, Edmund Cathers. That would have been something else, wouldn't it? Off the post, and it stayed out. He made a great save, and that was the right thing. Throw it down the floor. Ever so close. So through 40 minutes of lacrosse, it stays 7-5 for the St. Albert Miners leading the Onondaga Redhawks. It's funny that that play would happen in Nanaimo because it was earlier this year when a member of the Senior A Timberman scored two goals in a game. A goaltender, Charles Claxton. First time ever in WLA history that that has happened, a goalie with two goals, a couple of empty netters. It was done in a game in Maple Ridge here earlier this summer. So goaltender scoring in Nanaimo is certainly top of mind. And Edmund Cathers just about made this a one-goal game. And that would have been the ultimate way to end the period for the Onondaga Redhawks, but they're down by a couple. And the St. Albert Miners look like they've found themselves up by two heading to the third period. Trying to become another team at five wins in this tournament. Conewaga's at 5-0. and oh. They play next as President's Cup continues. Capital Region, Conewaga at 5. Oakville, Nanaimo, 8 o'clock tonight. Oakville, right in that mix as well as a 4-1 and one lacrosse team. They could get win number 5 tonight. Nanaimo trying to go to 4-2. and two. And the host team looked impressive last night. Can they do it again against that group of speedsters from Oakville? We'll get a break in and come back in seven minutes with period three.
Third period action from the Nimals Frank Crane Arena just seconds away between the St. Albert Miners and the Onondaga Redhawks. 7-5 Miners through 40 minutes. And the lead definitely changed hands and there was a specific point in this lacrosse game. Sometimes you can't identify where the turning point is. Well, you can in this one pretty easily right now. When the game was 4-2, Keegan Ball put together two back-to-back -back shifts of brilliance. The first one just on his own, driving through the Red Hawks defense, drew a penalty, didn't matter because he scored just seconds after that. And then 18 seconds later, took a feed in flight and came in to beat a very sharp Edmund Cathers in the Onondaga net. But 7-5, the Miners lead. Onondaga, right from the get-go, was playing on the front foot until that 4-2 scoreline. When Deacon scored to make it 5-5, they'd kept on par. But then two goals in the later going of the period. Graydon Cornfield and then at 18.43, a transition effort from John Lintz. St. Albert trying to get win number five. They want to keep pace and they want another shot in a big way you know at the Kahnawaga Indians. The only perfect team at this tournament. They have been exceptional to watch, and St. Albert has too. And as I've been mentioning in the broadcast a couple of times, don't forget about Oakville at 4-1. and one. And maybe just not the same reputation, and maybe that's why they don't get the same chatter right now. But Oakville's a 4-1 and one lacrosse team. They're in action tonight against the Nanaimo. Conewaga a chance against Capital Region at 5 Pacific time today to move to 6 and 0. Oh. Day 5 continues to roll along and this game is back underway in period number 3. Graydon Cornfield has it. Coming towards the net. Cornfield to the middle. Low shot but wide. Rogers able to pick the ball up. Has a man ahead and that's where the ball goes. Deacon has one goal already in this game. Deacon has Yee coming to the net with him. Nanticoke takes the pass. Remember, Cathers, the goaltender, went for a 200-foot shot, hit the post in the dying seconds, the very waning seconds of the game, almost put his team within one goal at the end of the second. Duff gets away from a couple of bodies and moves forward to the St. Albert Miners. Keegan Ball, Mike Triolo, Triolo stepping, gets to the paint. Cather stopped his shot, though. Officials call for the reset and get it. There's a long-range shot. Ball just hit the post. Would have been his hat-trick goal. Once again, a St. Albert reset. Working out of his own territory here. Up to center goes Kinnear. Kinnear, Triolo, Ball. Keegan Ball trying to barge through. The ball is loose in the corner now. Picked up by the Red Hawks and Onondaga comes forward. Limboris, he was stopped by Bold on a breakaway late in period number two as well. Seneca. Cree Cathers wants it, gets it from Halftown. Cree Cathers to Seneca. Seneca dumps down low. Put to the top, long range shot. Cree Cathers deflecting off a helmet. Is it going to stay in play? Still is. James Cathers in the corner. Draws a double team. Passes to Halftown. Took a shot. Good save by Bold. Reset opportunity. Halftown gets it. Ball knocked out of his stick. O'Meara is trying to get it back. It's into Aaron Bold's stick. Play able to continue. Bold arcs it ahead. And Druko's on the ball. Two minutes and change gone third period. Graydon Cornfield to the middle. Delayed call coming here. Against Onondaga, here's a chance for Lachlan. Just missed. Keegan Ball has to pick himself up off the floor. But a power play is to come. And as he picks himself up off the floor, he'll likely be a big part of this man advantage that is to come. Still trying to gain his bearings back for sure. O'Brien heads off the floor. And that's going to be five minutes for a slash. Oh, that's a big call. Five minutes for the slash. St. Albert up by two. 
and a long power play. Onondaga has been consistent in that they've been hyper aggressive in this game. They've done a wonderful job killing off penalties, really. But this is a five minute advantage for a very strong offense. Ball and Triolo play catch. Lachlan down low, Triolo up high. Ball forced. Jordan Cornfield puts it up for Keegan Ball. Shoots one, gathers the save. Looks to outlet. High ball up and over center. Foot race for it. Aaron Bold able to scoop it. Runs in behind his net. Keegan Ball will bring it forward. Ball coming up the middle. Takes a look. Ball passes it across. Loads up. Shot from Cornfield and going down to his knees. Edmund Cathers to keep that ball out. Mike Triolo from the corner. 40 seconds gone in the major. Ball. Cornfield. Now Jordan Cornfield at the crease. Lost possession. Triolo helps. Graydon Cornfield. Put it across. Shot from Lachlan. That one missed the mark, and all the way back down the floor it goes. Aaron Bold comes out. Bold for Keegan Ball. Lachlan to trail out of the crease. Graydon Cornfield in close. Great save by Edmund Cathers. Goes down to the floor. Had the ball underneath him. Now his mates start up. Rogers leads the way. Rogers pass. They need to get over that center line. Nanticokes triple teamed and swarmed and there's no way he was going to make it whether he won the ball or not that took a lot more than 10 seconds and it was going to take even longer than that a minute and a half gone in the major 7-5 St. Albert Lachlan to ball Graydon Cornfield to Jordan pass to the middle there's a shot and a good save off Keegan Ball by Cathers Lachlan grabs the ball St. Albert gets the reset. Two goal spread. Lachlan moving up. Wine shoots. Cather stopped him up high. Outlet pass. Can Deacon catch up to it? He's got one shorthanded goal. The ball keeps skipping away from him. Andruko checks him. Bold comes out. Takes the ball away. And the Miners bring up the man advantage again. Keegan ball right back out. This five man unit. So good. Ball's the quarterback. Lachlan Triolo. Lachlan, ball. Graydon Cornfield to Jordan. Plays it across, quick stick. Cather's another save. Got the better of Lachlan that time. Outlet pass on the money. Here's Becker. Has Yee with him on the run. Becker shoots. Bold makes the save. Grabs the ball himself. Looks to outlet. Down to 218 remaining in the major. O'Brien continues off for the slash. Cornfield coming up slowly. Ball. Triolo shoots one into Cathers. Taken from the paint. Arnold rips it forward. Limboris to the net. Limboris shoots. Just missed. I think that might have gone off the post and all the way out of play. Aaron Bold might have got a foot on that. Ball recovered. By Onondag, the Redhawks came very close there. A double team is on Seneca. Can Seneca work out of it? Yes, he does, to the crease. Seneca has to run to the other side. They don't double him quite as quickly now. Seneca gets away again. Still has it. Cam Seneca doing a fantastic job here. Tremendous work, pinned to the wall, and the ball is kicked into Aaron Bold, but back in called. Onondaga ball. But is there a penalty call coming here? It was going to be Red Hawks ball. Are we seeing another major for a high stick? Would this be unbelievable? Wade Bucktooth, another major for a high stick. Back-to-back -back majors for Onondaga. 7-5 they trail. 
And in a real tough spot now, Cathers makes another save. Graydon Cornfield couldn't get the ball. Taken from the crease. Edmund Cathers. Long pass down the floor. Misses Rogers. And you talk about an opportunity here for St. Albert. Lintz comes up the middle. They're already up by two. Long five on three. Keegan Ball loads, passes, chance in tight. And just missing on that down low opportunity was Lachlan. Noble scoops the ball forward. Recovered once more by the Miners. Lachlan, ball, looks at Ferris. Pass to him. Ferris shoots one. A good save by Cathers. Ferris thought he might be able to get that through him. Cathers didn't have his traditional positioning there, but he made the save. Lintz, ball, shoots. Again, Cathers the save. Picks up the ball. 17 seconds left in the five on three. Rogers, long, high outlet pass. What a job to take it by Deacon, but he stepped back over. O'Meara's up the floor. Coming towards the net. O'Meara shot, missed with that. Keegan Ball takes it. Five on four now. O'Brien's back on the floor. St. Albert setting up slowly. Lachlan. Ball. Takes a look. Ball. Cornfield shot wide. He was being impeded as he shot it. Lachlan takes. Rogers goes right to him. And the shot clock winds out. 317 left in the Bucktooth Major for high sticking. Edmund Cathers passes it. Ripped down the floor. Nice catch by Cree Cathers. Williamson's on him. Pass to the front. Nanticoke onto it. And the ball raggers are out now. Trying to get set up with a man down and kill more off this major. Back to back. Five minute majors against Onondaga. Nanticoke laying to the net. He's in. Ball came out of his stick just as he was going to shoot. He made a great run, but just at the very end, he was caught up to. Andrew Co. Keegan Ball. Ball moves in. Throws it to Lachlan. Lachlan to the crease. Triolo shot it too high over the top. Ball in behind, and Cathers comes out to grab it. A feed off for O'Brien. O'Brien takes a look. Dumps it down for Seneca. Has to run onto it. Lost possession. Aaron Bold from his crease. Steps out. Under two to play in this major with Wade Bucktooth off the floor. 10.49 left in the period. No scoring in the third. A 7-5 lead. For St. Albert, Kinnear to the front. There's a shot. Great save, Cathers on Ferris. Noble from the corner. Pass off. And here comes the Onondaga ball rag team. Becker, Deacon. 125 left in this major. Deacon draws O'Meara and Toll. Tough assignment. Gets away. Aaron Bold runs into Deacon. Gets away from that. Double teams back on him. Ball finally comes out. Deacon wants it again. Can he get it? Can Becker get it? Where's the ball? Rolls through the crease. Becker from the corner. Deacon. Andruko forcing him. Deacon fights to get the ball back. Scooping it up is Bold. Aaron Bold with a high pass for O'Meara. O'Meara. Two teammates with him to the net. O'Meara, shot, scores! When you've got Keegan Ball with you, you think there might be a pass, but O'Meara sniped the shot. Eight to five, first goal of this period for either team, and it comes at 10-17. O'Meara with a very non-traditional power play goal, but an important one nonetheless. And St. Albert, I don't know if you'd say that they've been at their best for this entire 50 minutes, but they're finding ways. And you have to find ways in a tournament like this 
to win when you're not at your peak because there's no chance you're going to be at your best every single day. But there's a lot to fall back on for this lacrosse club. And they've done that today. Another penalty call coming. Kevin Bucktooth is going to be sent off. A charging call against the Red Hawks number 25. And I don't think there's any doubt that at the end of this afternoon of lacrosse that Onondaga is going to feel hard done by, by the officials. But just the same, they brought that aggressive game plan. They've stayed with it. They've taken a lot of penalties because of it. But they haven't deviated from what they were going to do. Five on three once again. And St. Albert has had a lot of these in the afternoon. Lintz, he'll just be out there to catch any loose balls. Ball to Ferris to Ball. Lachlan and Ball play catch. Lachlan cross floor, quick stick. Great save by Cathers as he stopped Graydon Cornfield. Ferris, Ball to the crease. Opportunity for Lachlan and Cathers again makes the save. 14 seconds in the five on three. Ferris to the crease. There's a shot again stopped down low by Edmund Cathers. Graydon Cornfield, Keegan Ball. Lachlan faking, Cathers another save. Ball picked up by Yee. Wade Bucktooth out of the box, but he couldn't take the pass. Lintz cut it off. Keegan Ball across for Ferris. A pickoff. O'Brien up ahead for Adam Yee. 108 left in the charging call against Kevin Bucktooth. 8 5. St. Albert in front of Onondaga. And now a call coming. This is going to be a call against the Miners. Lintz kicks it to the corner. He won't play it. Becker takes it from the angle. And now finally, Andruko takes possession. 8-11 on the clock. And about an extra 10 seconds at least, if not more, killed there. St. Albert wouldn't touch it. And I think that's going to be Snyder who goes to the box. 92 is in the box. 8-11 remaining in the third. Onondaga must get a couple quick. Becker. Half town there to help him out. Becker looks at James Cathers across the floor. Still Becker. Tries to spin. Gets to the front. Becker dives. He was in the crease and Aaron Bowles stopped him anyhow. Sprinting up the floor. Andrew Coe. Breakaway in on Cathers but too many. I'm pretty sure that's the call. The Miners are complaining. Or were they being told that play wasn't going to be allowed to be whistled in? Because it is Miner's ball. Now they're going to give it back to Aaron Bold. And Keegan Ball will take it all the way back in his own end. Ball coming ahead. Passing it off. Jordan Cornfield a shot. Scores! He put that right through Cather's stick. And once again, another minor down on the floor. It was Triolo. 9-5, four-on-four situational goal. And no doubt that that one from Cornfield fooled Cather's. 7.38 to go. The Miners in full control now. Just a tremendous first half of the game for Onondaga. 
but eventually the aggressiveness, all the penalties have caught up to them. St. Albert's just continued to come and come. And their key players have taken punishment. I mean, you've seen Lachlan. You've seen Ball down. Triola was just down there. This Red Hawks team has been tough to play against today. That being said, the Miners have found a way to be up by four as the time continues to tick down in this game. They'll face it off after the goal. Three on three lacrosse for the next six seconds. The floor is seemingly empty right now. Triolo and Seneca will take the face off. And the emotion has definitely raised between the two teams. Triolo won it for Toll. Plays it back. Sullivan to Toll. Now it's a four on three power play. Loose ball. Kevin Buckthuth trying to win it. Lachlan does. The ball rag started here for St. Albert. Will they double off Lachlan? They tried to. Keegan Ball. Ball takes a look. They don't want to double team him. Rogers watching him. Now Rogers calls for Arnold. Ferris takes the pass from Ball. Lachlan hanging on. Keegan Ball, Lachlan on the run, Ferris, Lachlan at the crease, Arnold just got a stick in the way. Kevin Bucktooth won it back to Noble. Very late stages of this four on three power play now. Nanticoke drops it off, James Cathers, Nanticoke, Cathers to the crease, Nanticoke fakes, good save short side Aaron Bold. Now four on four for the next 26 seconds. Ball deep in Miner's territory in the corner. Toll behind his net takes it away. 5.55 to go in the third period here. And a four goal lead for the St. Albert Miners. They've scored the last four goals in the game. It was tied 5-5. Too late in the second. Two here in the third. Back to five on five ball. Kinnear, long range shot. Closing up is Edmund Cathers. Ball in his stick. Up the floor now. Halftown. Halftown for Becker. Seneca. Seneca right to the crease. Crease violation there as he got in too close. Up the floor comes O'Meara. O'Meara to the crease. Lachlan stopped by Cathers. Triolo after the loose ball. He's double teamed. Still fighting to get it though. Yi steals it. Can he stay with it? Yes. Adam Yi with speed towards the goal. Rogers helps him out. Rogers shoots high and wide. The ball will bounce right to Nantico who has it now. Nanticoke, James Cathers, 440 left. Four goal lead for St. Albert. Nanticoke in behind, throws it to the front. Becker shoots, Aaron Bold stops him. High outlet, O'Meara, breakaway. O'Meara in on Cathers, fakes. Cathers stayed right with him, big stop. O'Brien couldn't take the ball. Keegan Ball has it. Setting up from center. Takes a couple of wraps from Arnold. Ball passed it off. Lachlan breaks into a run. Lachlan to the crease. Ferris couldn't reach his pass, but 
A nice job to pick it up and send it back by Kinnear. There's a quick stick, and what a goal from the side. Lachlan. Man, was he off at a stiff angle, but he buried that one. Double figures for St. Albert, 10 to 5. Just a workmanlike performance today. Now a five goal run after the game was tied at 5 5. And how many games have we seen be close for the longest time and then one team? Find a way to solve the other. You can call it a physical battle. You can call it a battle of will. and I think it's both of those things. But we've seen it so many times at this President's Cup that an even game will turn and turn hard one way. Deacon up top. Nanticoke shoots one too high. Deacon in behind. Three and a half to go. Deacon. Running in behind the net. Plays it up top. Here's Halftown. Shoots wide. Williams couldn't take the ball. Gets some help from Sullivan. Sullivan does. Sullivan met aggressively by Noble. Sullivan still hangs on to it. Drops it off. Another call coming against Onondaga. Three minutes to play. That's been one of the consistent themes throughout the afternoon. The Red Hawks taking penalties. They've kept up with the game plan all the way through. And the game plan's not, hey guys, we're going to take a bunch of penalties. It's to be as aggressive as possible against a gifted offensive team. But the end result has been penalties. I think there might be coincidentals coming here, actually. Slashing and holding the two calls. Graydon Cornfield heading off the floor along with Brian Bucktooth. 2.58 left and most of the rest will be played four on four, barring further penalties. And I say that because the way that these teams have gone at each other, we could very well see more penalties. And it's really been on a dagger that has been initiating most of that, and then at times, St. Albert has responded. But Onondaga has wanted to play it very aggressively, and for the first half of the game, it worked almost to perfection. The second half of the game, St. Albert's found a way to take advantage. A game of two halves, very clearly. Here's Kinnear to the net, shooting one. Cather's made the save. Noble, up ahead with a pass. Johnson is running. Throws it back to Seneca. Seneca puts it down low to Becker. Becker passing across the floor. Nantico takes the ball. Becker drives one. Bold made the stop. Looks for the outlet. Snyder has control. Snyder setting up very slowly. 10-5, biggest lead of the day for St. Albert. And five is going to be the magic number. It's going to be a five and one performance so far for St. Albert. And here's a late opportunity and another good save made by Cathers. Ball batted loose, picked up by Noble. Arnold on the run, moving towards Aaron Bold's net. Noble's there with him. Wade Bucktooth. James Cathers goes across the floor. Noble put a shot on net. Aaron Bold made the save. 80 seconds left in period number three. Lots of room in this four on four. And an end to the game well managed by St. Albert. Something we've seen before in this tournament. 13 on the possession still left. He tried to steal the ball but Taken away once again by the Miners. And because that's a reset, that gives Riley a chance to just run it off. Ball dropped down, taken by Limboris 
In behind the net, 53 to play. Limboris, half town, Nanticoke. Nanticoke takes on Toll. A pick run by Arnold, but the officials didn't like that pick, and it's going to be St. Albert ball into the final 45 seconds. And Truco stands and waits at center, throws the ball back. Toll. Looks across, throws it back, O'Meara. Not exciting to watch the end of this game, but again, very well managed. There's a long range shot wide of Bold's net. And another opportunity, Kevin Bucktooth launches a pass down. Eight seconds remain. There's a drive from Nanticoke, stopped by Aaron Bold. And the final three seconds will tick down. Duff takes it at the very end. 10-5 final. St. Albert back in the win column. It was 4-2 in the second period for Onondaga as they dropped to 1-5. And, and after a goal by Nanticoke at 10-29, Keegan Ball scored two individual effort goals, especially the first one, but the second one was really manufactured by him as well. But back-to-back -back goals for Ball in 18 seconds and it tied the game at 4-4. And from that moment onwards, the game was St. Albert's game. They scored eight of the last nine goals in the contest. Three goal run, broken up by a shorthanded effort from Deacon. And then a five goal run that spanned two periods after that. Two to end period number two. And then the only three goals of the third period. So closing the game with the last five. And... I think meaningful handshakes here to Edmund Cathers, who was just fantastic in the Onondaga net. They went after St. Albert. They played aggressive. They took penalties because of it. Multiple times down five on three. Again, for the first half it worked, but St. Albert found a workaround, got their sticks going, and I've seen this team execute a lot better at this tournament, and I think they would say that too, but... Champions find a way. And until somebody can knock St. Albert out, they are still the champions. Champions in 2016 and 2017. And MVP awards. Which way do you go? You know, I might even give it to Keegan Ball. I know he's won the MVP award before, but that 18 seconds that he spent watching uh, his team get down and then Bringing them back. Yeah, Keegan Ball might get a vote. And Edmund Cathers, no doubt about it. They just made the official announcement of 51 saves and one assist. Edmund Cathers was on his game. Pat O'Meara. Uh, nice to see a transition guy get a game MVP award. So kind of not the usual suspects here. Edmund Cathers, almost a no-brainer. For the Onondaga Redhawks. He was so sharp in that, so consistent throughout, and it took a lot to solve him. And a nice handshake there between O'Meara, the MVP for St. Albert, and Cathers, and a nice coming together there for Aaron Bold and Edmund Cathers as well. And you can see the show of respect as a lot of the St. Albert players went to Edmund Cathers, congratulating him for a great game. 10 5 St. Albert. They move to 5-1, Onondaga at 1-5 after this afternoon's contest. Lots more lacrosse still to come from Frank Crane Arena in Nanaimo, Capital Region against Conewaga. Conewaga sitting at 5-0. They need a win to move ahead of these St. Albert Miners. Later on, the host Timberman against Oakville. Oakville trying to become a 5-1 team as well. The Timberman trying to up their record to 4-2. Lots more day five action to come. The next game coming up in one hour's time.
Thank you.